What is up ladies and J-words? Welcome back to my channel. My main channel. I also have a second channel. So today I wanted to talk about unpopular, controversial opinions that I have. And you might be wondering, Simone, why would you share such a thing on the internet? It's because I don't believe in cancel culture and I also believe that my audience is smart enough to not cancel people over stupid things. I've actually spoken about these on my Instagram before and I'll get some replies going careful you're gonna get cancelled. But literally like 95% of my replies would be in some sort of agreement with me. If I ever say something that gets me cancelled and people are in mass disagreement with what I'm saying, then I will always apologize and reflect on what I said. But these are some opinions I have that I like firmly believe in and whether or not you agree with it. Also guys, if you wanna travel with me next year, I'm hosting a trip with Trover Trip. Probably gonna be in June or July, we'll see. But I need you guys to go fill out the survey if you're interested, only girls 18 and above. It's gonna be super fun. We're gonna be with like-minded women. I'm gonna be there and yeah, go fill out the survey to vote on your budget, destination, what time we should have the trip and there's gonna be many more coming in the future. So when the trip is finally released, spots are gonna fill out really fast. So make sure you do the survey because then you'll get on the email list and so yeah, fill out the survey. Opinion one. I think body positivity has gone too far and it can enable obesity now. Now we're not talking about curvy. Okay, I've had this debate on my Instagram and people will always confuse obesity with curvy. No, we are talking about obesity here. Not someone that is maybe born a little bit more thicker than the average person, but can still be considered healthy. We're talking about obesity, okay? So don't twist my words. Our obesity, you are actually unhealthy if you are obese. It has nothing to do with, oh my God, all bodies are beautiful. No, you are at a way higher risk of mortality than someone of an average weight. There is nothing beautiful at being at a higher risk of dying. Now, of course, there are conditions such as PCOS where you cannot process insulin in your body correctly, which leads to people becoming obese. If you have a medical condition, 100% I have compassion for you because it must be so difficult to lose this weight. But I do not have compassion for people who are obese, they do nothing about their weight to lose it, knowing that they are unhealthy, yet they will argue all bodies are beautiful, accept my body for who it is. If I accept your body as it is, I'm basically condemning you to your own death, seriously. Remember, we're not talking about curvy, we're talking about obesity, okay? Obesity. Something I think is really great about the body positivity movement is the fact that it now gives representation for more body types apart from just, you know, skinny, skinny models. What made me realize this is my friend, we are very different. Obviously I'm tall and I'm thin. She is shorter, maybe curvier, she's still slender. But what she said to me is when the Kardashian body type came around on a spectrum of like, you know, skinny model to Kardashian BBL type, now there are two glorified bodies in the media. For her to look like a Kardashian, it was way more achievable than to look like a BS model. So I think that's one good thing about it. But when we cross over into, is this unhealthy? That's an issue. Same with like promoting BBLs, BBLs. Once again, they put you at risk of dying. It's dangerous. Opinion two. I do not think there is anything empowering about OnlyFans. I have talked about this in my Women Wake Up video on my second channel. I understand the argument. It's like, oh, women, like in the past, we weren't able to do what we wanted to do. We didn't have this type of freedom. And now we can go sell our body online and make a huge living. And that's empowering because it's based on the fact that we get to choose what to do with our body. No, just because we get to choose does not make it empowering. Whenever I think about sex work or prostitution, I think about in Le Mis when Anne Hathaway, in order to provide for a child, she then sold her body and cut her hair off. That was like her last resort as a woman after trying everything else. And now girls cannot wait until they're 18 to do such a thing. And I actually think it's kind of disgusting. Additionally, people are like, oh, OnlyFans is so empowering because I'm taking money from men. Let's remember who is still at the top here. The man is still at the top, why? Because they're the one saying that you're attractive enough that I'm gonna pay for your content. The moment you're not attractive, they don't like the content you're making, that money's gone, 
you're out. They're the ones still who are choosing who's going to be relevant on OnlyFans. On top of that, not everyone that goes onto OnlyFans makes money. You will obviously on TikTok only see the top people who are making money because they're also the most attractive. But the ones who are doing, doing the craziest shit and promoting themselves the most as well. Going back to how selling your body should be a last decision thing. Everything is circumstantial. Someone who really that they've exhausted all their options, they now decide to do sex work. It's very different from someone with the world at their feet choosing to do this because they think it's easy. We live in the age of the internet. There are so many other avenues you can take and you can try before selling your body online. There's also the excuse that, oh, well, if men are gonna look at me anyway, I might as well charge them for it. Then you are putting a price on yourself. Opinion three. I think people who rely too heavily on the mystical world and psychics for guidance are just really, really lost in their life. Now, don't get me wrong, I believe in all that stuff, but I just think people who are way too into astrology and they define themselves by their star sign, they just don't know who they are. They'll be like, oh, I did this because I'm a Taurus. Oh, I did this because I'm a Leo. What if you just did this because it's your personality? You know? What if you just like clothes and you're not just a Taurus? That's not to say I don't believe in astrology. I do, and I think it's a really great way to kind of outline your life. But it doesn't mean you necessarily have to live by it. Like what I did was I looked at my birth chart. I got a reading when I was like 18. It did help me figure out what I had to do, but I didn't define myself by it. But people define themselves by their astrology nowadays. And I'm like, babe, you need to go out and figure out who you are. This kind of goes into my sponsorship with Keen. So Keen will connect you with talented tarot readers and astrologers. If you want to get a reading on Keen like I did, it's super easy to start. All you need to do is create an account and you'll be able to choose from hundreds of readers immediately. For example, with my reader, she basically did a birth chart reading for me. She gave me some guidance on like, oh, you're really good in this area. I see your career flourishing in this. Ironically, it was actually self-help and this was before I was a YouTuber. She's like, you're in a creative space and I see you like, being a teacher of like some spirituality self-help type. And I hated this. Cause at 18, I wanted to be like a literal Wall Street mogul, which is funny. Cause you look at me and you're like this bitch, like a Wall Street mogul. I was very much like that when I was younger. So I hated this, but it's funny. Cause I got this reading, forgot about it. And my life went in that trajectory. These readers each have unique specialties. So they'll be able to understand your situation and you'll find what you're looking for. Do you want to learn more about your love life? Is he cheating on you? You want to talk to a dead pet? You want to talk to an alive pet? want to figure out some things in your life, Keen has a reader that can provide insight for you. So you can choose whatever reader is best for you and then you can connect via text or phone call. As a new user of Keen, for only $1.99, you can get 10 minutes off your first phone call or text with a psychic on Keen. That's up to $99 in savings. So go to my link here to get your first reading on Keen. So yes, I think that astrology can be a major guidance in people's life and I do recommend it, but I don't recommend to absolutely live by it. So when I got my birth chart done when I was younger, I really didn't resonate with it at all. And then I forgot about my birth chart. And I came back when I was 22 and I looked at it and I was like, oh my God, why am I exactly like this? But I really think if I looked at my birth chart and I lived by it when I was 18, I would not even be me today because I naturally developed into this. And I think people need to naturally go and find themselves without looking too much for external guidance from like some mystical source. I think it's good to have a connection to spirituality or your religion, whatever, but you know, go and try and find yourself. Opinion five. People who complain about rich people and blame everything on rich people, as well as the people who tweet stuff like, it is sickening to be a billionaire. They should donate all their money to charity. If they were a billionaire, it would be much different. It's really easy when you're on the outside to be like, oh, this is what I would do. It is very, very different when it's actually you in that position. Opinion six. A lot of people create their own issues up. Issues which actually are not that important and don't exist. So I've been traveling the past two months. I've been around people every day, which means I've not been able to have a lot of mental peace. And I'm someone that needs a lot of quiet in my life in order to like process and reflect upon my thoughts. Now coming to Vienna where I don't know anyone, I'm able to be silent with my thoughts. Suddenly, all of these problems, which are not really real, have started to come up because I've been alone so much. I really started to reflect, number one, are these actual problems or issues which, because I've been so busy that I've actually not had time to address? And the way you know if it's a problem or not is if it's actually affecting your relationships or affecting your life. And were these problems affecting my life? Not really. Like half of them, they're really not that big of a deal. Some things are only a big deal because we make it a big deal. 
but if it's really not affecting your life that much, it's not a big deal. When we're truly alone, that's when problems start to arise, even health issues. I vividly remember this because I'm a little bit of a hypochondriac. In one of my psychology courses, we were learning about how a lot of the symptoms we feel in our body, for example, you know, say you have like a pain in your knee and we're like, oh my God, it must be knee cancer. A lot of the time, these symptoms don't mean anything and it will go away. Like 80% of the symptoms we experience every day are nothing, they're meaningless. The more we're alone, the more time the brain has to manifest these symptoms within our body that might not even be real. And similarly, I think that's the same with problems. The brain will just think of things which aren't even a big deal because we have so much time to think now. Opinion seven. Some people, some, let's emphasize some, not all people, they're addicted to being depressed or being in the current mental state they're, they're in at the moment. Now, I've been depressed before. I've also had anxiety, still have it, to be honest. What do I mean by this? I know people who are really suffering at home, they're gonna say to me, Simone, I'm not choosing my fate. I know, I have compassion for you. But there are some people out there who are addicted to being mentally ill. And what do I mean by this? When you are diagnosed, this becomes a part of your identity. I am now a depressed person. Everything I do, oh, it's because of my depression. Or you identify with your mental illness. And because of this, it can actually prevent some of your healing or progress to getting further away from the negative effects of this mental illness. I don't want anyone to skew my words. I'm not saying that people who are depressed are choosing to be that way. I know this as well because I'm a psychology graduate and we actually studied this particular thing in one of our courses where once people identify for so long with their mental illness, it's really hard for them to come out of it because it is now who they are. They All they know is that I am a depressed individual. Opinion 8. The modern medical system, they diagnose people way too easily with things. Like there is a diagnosis for everything when, to be honest, you could be within the spectrum of normality. I'll give you an example. I, when I travel sometimes, I get panic attacks. I constantly feel a little bit anxious. And because of this, my doctor was like, yes, you have anxiety. We want to put you on to medication. And I'm like, look, no, because I know how to manage it. Number one, number two, I know that if I go onto this medication, Opinion 9. You cannot have complete representation of every minority in every single piece of media. And people really get butthurt about this. And I think it's um, also partially because society is so woke as well. It's a bit too fucking woke, if I say so myself. Like, go to sleep, society. Shh, hush, little baby, don't you cry. Mom is gonna sing you a lullaby. <laughs> um, I'll give you an example though. I think it was in my attractiveness video. I was just listing some celebrities who I think were super beautiful, like Megan Fox or Jessica Alba. These are like my top two. And then someone commented, notice how she didn't mention any black people. And I'm like, bruh, I didn't mention any Asian people either and I'm Asian. It's simply because these two people were at the top of my mind. Like I've always thought they were so beautiful. It doesn't mean I don't find black people or Asian people beautiful. Like, of course I think they're beautiful as well. But just because I didn't like say it, doesn't really mean anything. And I think also people are getting a little bit sick with how like Netflix, they really, I, I honestly sometimes think they go overboard with the representation. Now don't get me wrong, I think it's such a great thing, especially as someone who is half Asian, to see more people that look like me in films and media because I can go into my experience being Asian in Australia, but I did experience a lot of racism and I would say ever since TikTok became widely used and Netflix started to make shows with Asians, I've been treated a lot, lot, lot differently. So representation is wonderful. But it's just really unrealistic for every single piece of media to represent every minority or like every gender out there. And people need to stop getting butt hurt if they're not represented. Because if there's too much representation, people are annoyed. They're like, oh my God, like turn it down. And if they're not represented, then there's a riot happening. You can never make society happy. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
controversial opinions by me. My private community coaching thingy is coming soon, hopefully in the next few weeks. We're building the platform right now. Go subscribe to the second channel, check out Kane, check out the Mind Formula, and ich liebe dich. Shout out, dogs forever. Do the stronger for you. Norman Rockwell. No, I can't do her. It's just me and you. I've got to see on my list. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Venice bitch. I'm the neighborhood kiss. No, baby, kiss, kiss. You're in the yard, I like the fire. And as the summer fades away, nothing gold can say. You write, I tour, we make it work. You're beautiful and I'm insane. We're American made. Give me Hallmark. One dream under the one lover. Make me happy and blue. Norman Rockwell. No high under the <coughs> company. Right. Mm, it's just yeah. me and you. Oh God, it's you on my list. It's me and you gonna speak. On the street with the neighborhood kids. Sending off and thank you. You're in the yard. I like the fire. As the summer fades away. What do you think we can say? You write I to a wing making work. American made. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, sound off and bang his kids. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, sound off and bang his kids. Oh, I'm missing you on my lips. It's me, a little kind of spirit. On the street with the neighborhood kids. Sound off and bang his kids. Yeah, 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 sound off and bang his kids. Me, myself, I like diamonds, then I can't send a clover. Over and over, honey. Over and over, honey. Over and over, honey. Over and over, honey. If you were mine, I'd be jealous of your love. If you were mine, I'd be jealous of your love. If you were mine, I'd be jealous of your love.